Welcome to Legends and History. I am Justin. I am a drummer and I'm going to be presenting you. Yes, you the person that is watching right now and I hope you're going to be watching more upcoming videos. The series Legends and History. In today's episode, which is our third one, we will be going over Eminem's achievements, awards, groups, childhood, and overall life and career. Marshall Buse Mathers III, known professionally as Eminem, is an American rapper. He is credited with popularizing hip-hop in Middle America and is often regarded as one of the greatest rappers of all time. Eminem's global success and acclaimed works are widely regarded as having broken racial barriers for the acceptance of white rappers in popular music. After the release of his debut album, Infinite, and the extended play The Slim Shady EP, Eminem signed with Dr. Dre's Aftermath Entertainment and subsequently achieved mainstream popularity in 1999 with The Slim Shady LP. His next two releases, The Marshall Mathers LP and The Eminem Show, were worldwide successes and were both nominated for the Grammy Award for Album of the Year. After the release of his next album, Encore, Eminem went on hiatus in 2005, largely due, due to a prescription drug addiction. He returned to the music industry four years later with the release of Relapse and Recovery, which was released the following year. Recovery was the best-selling album worldwide of 2010, making it Eminem's second album after the Eminem show in 2002 to be the best-selling album of the year worldwide. In the following years, he released the US number one albums, The Marshall Mathers LP 2, Revival, Kamikaze, and Music to be Murdered by. Eminem's songs include My Name Is, The Real Slim Shady, The Way I Am, Stan, Without Me, Lose Yourself, Mockingbird, Not Afraid, Love The Way You Lie, Rap God, The Monster, River, and Godzilla. Lose Yourself topped the Billboard Hot 100 for 12 weeks, the most for a solo rap song and won the Academy Award for Best Original Song, making Eminem the first hip-hop artist to ever win the award. Eminem is among the best-selling music artists of all time with estimated worldwide sales of over 220 million records. He was the best-selling music artist in the United States of the 2000s and the best-selling male music artist in the United States of the 2000s, third overall. Billboard named him the artist of the decade from 2000 to 2009. He has had 10 number one albums on the Billboard 200 and 5 number one singles on the Billboard Hot 100. The Marshall Mathers LP, The Eminem Show, Curtain Called the Hits, Lose Yourself, Love the Way You Lie, and Not Afraid have all been certified diamond or higher by the Recording Industry of Association of America, known as RIAA. Rolling Stone has included him in its list of the 100 greatest artists of all time and the 100 greatest songwriters of all time. He has won numerous awards, including 15 Grammy Awards, 8 American Music Awards, 17 Billboard Music Awards, an Academy Award, a Primetime Emmy Award, an MTV Europe Music Global Icon Award. In November 2022, Eminem was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Eminem was born on October 17, 1972 in St. Joseph, Missouri, the only child of the Marshall Bruce Mothers Jr. and Deborah Ray, known as Debbie. He is of Scottish, Welsh, English, Cherokee, German, Swiss, Polish, and possibly Luxembourgish ancestry. His mother nearly died during her 73-hour labor with him. His father abandoned his family when Eminem was a year and a half old and he was raised only by his mother, Debbie, in poverty. His mother later had a son named Nathan Kane Samara, known as Nate. At the age of 12, he and his mother had moved several times and lived in several towns and cities in Missouri before settling in Warren, Michigan, a suburb of Detroit. Eminem frequently fought with his mother, whom a social worker described as having a very suspicious, almost paranoid personality. He wrote letters to his father, but Debbie said that they all came back with marked return to sender. Eminem was interested in storytelling, aspiring to be a comic book artist before discovering hip-hop. He heard his first rap song, Reckless Futuring Ice-T, on the Break-In soundtrack, a gift from Debbie's half-brother, Ronnie Polkinar. His uncle was close to the boy and later became a musical mentor to him. 
When Polk and Learn committed suicide in 1991, Eminem stopped speaking publicly for days and did not attend his funeral. At the age of 14, Eminem began rapping with high school friend Mike Ruby. They adopted the names Manix and MNM, the idol evolving into Eminem. On Saturdays, they attended open mic contest at the hip hop shop on West 7 Mile Road, considered ground zero for the Detroit rap scene. In 1988, Eminem went by the stage name MC Double M and formed his first group, New Jacks, and made a self titled demo tape with DJ Butterfingers. In 1989, they later joined Bassman Productions, who later changed their name into Soul Intent in 1992 with rapper Proof and other childhood friends. Later in 1996, Eminem and Proof teamed up with four other rappers to form the Dirty Dozen, known as D12, who released the underground EP in 1997 and their first album, Devil's Night, in 2001. Eminem was soon signed to Jeff and Mark Bass's FBT production and recorded his debut album, Infinite, for their independent web entertainment label. The album was a commercial failure upon its release in 1996. During this period, Eminem's rhyming style, primarily inspired by rappers Nas, Esham, and AZ, lacked the comically violent slant for which he later became known. Detroit disc jockeys largely ignored Infinite and the feedback Eminem did receive. Why don't you go into rock and roll led him to craft angrier, moodier tracks. At this time, Eminem lived in a crime-ridden neighborhood and his house was robbed several times. Eminem cooked and washed dishes for minimum wage at Gilbert's Lodge, a family-style restaurant at St. Clair Shores. His former boss described him as becoming a model employee as he worked 60 hours a week for six months after Haley's birth. He was fired shortly before Christmas and later said it was like five days before Christmas, which is Haley's birthday, I had like 40 bucks to get her something. After Eminem released the Slim Shady LP, he started his own record label, Shady Records, in late 1999. Eminem looked for an avenue to release D12 and his manager Paul Lo Rosenberg was keen to start a label, which led to the two teaming up to form Shady. Recorded from 1999 to 2000, the Marshall Mothers LP was released in May 2000. It sold 1.76 million copies in its first week, breaking US records held by Snoop Dogg's Doggy Style for fastest selling hip hop album and Britney Spears' Baby One More Time for fastest selling solo album. Their first single from the album, The Real Slim Shady, was a success despite controversies about Eminem's insults and dubious claims about celebrities. In his second single, The Way I Am, he reveals the pressure from his record company to top my name is. In his third single, Stan, Eminem tries to deal with his new fame, assuming the persona of a deranged fan who kills himself and his pregnant girlfriend. The music magazine Q called Stan the third greatest rap song ever and it was ranked 10th in the top40charts.com survey. The Marshall Mathers LP was certified diamond by the RIAA in March 2011 and sold 21 million copies worldwide. In 2000, Eminem also appeared in the Up In Smoke tour with rappers Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Zibit, and Ice Cube and the Family Values tour with Lamp Biscuit, headlighting the Anger Management tour with Papa Roach, Ludacris, and Exhibit. Eminem performed with Elton John at the 43rd Grammy Awards ceremony in 2011. The Eminem show was released in May 2002. It was another success, reaching number one on the charts and selling 1.332 million copies during its full week. The album's single, Without Me, then a great boy bands, Limp Biscuit, Dick, and Lini Cheney, Moby, and others. In 2003, Eminem, a lifelong fan of Tupac, provided production work for three tracks on the Tupac Resurrection soundtrack. He would follow this up the next year by producing 12 of the 16 tracks on Tupac's Loyal to the Game Club. On December 8, 2003, the United States Secret Service said that it was looking into allegations that Eminem had threatened the President of the United States. The cause for concern was the relics of We As Americans. Fuck money, I don't rap for dead presidents, I'd rather see the president dead. It's never been said, I set precedent. Encore, released in 2004, was another success, but not as successful as his previous albums. Its sales were partially driven by the first single, Just Lose It, which contained slurs directed towards Michael Jackson. On October 12, 
2004, a week after the release of Just Lose It, Michael Jackson phoned Steve Harvey's radio show, The Steve Harvey Morning Show, to report his displeasure with its video, which parodies Jackson's child molestation trial, plastic surgery, and the incident from 1984 when Jackson's hair caught on fire during the filming of a commercial. In the song, Eminem said that's not a stab at Michael, that's just a metaphor, I'm just a psycho. In 2007, Michael Jackson and Sony bought famous music from Viacom, giving him rights to songs from Eminem, Shakira, Beck, and others. Eminem began his first US concert tour in three years in the summer of 2005 with the Anger Management 3 Tour, featuring 50 Cent, G Unit, Lil Jon, D12, OB Trice, and The Alchemist, but in August, he canceled the European leg of the tour, later announcing that he had entered drug rehab for treatment of dependency on sleep medication. In July 2005, the Detroit Free Press reported a possible final bow for Eminem as a solo performer, quoting members of his inner circle as saying that he would embrace the roles of producer and label executive. A greatest hits album, Curtain Called the Hits, was released on December 6, 2005 by Aftermath Entertainment and sold nearly 441,000 copies in the US in its first week, marking Eminem's fourth consecutive number one album on the Billboard Hot 200 and was certified double platinum by the RIAA. However, Eminem suggested that month that WKQY's Mojo in the Morning show that he would be taking a break as an artist. I am at a point in my life right now where I feel like I don't know where my career is going. This is the reason that we call it Curtain Call, because this could be the final thing, we do not know. In December 2008, Eminem provided more details about the album, entitled Relapse, me and Dre are back in the lab like the good old days man. Dr. Dre ended up producing the majority of the tracks on Relapse, we are up to our old mischievous ways, let's just leave it at that. According to a March 5, 2009 press release, Eminem would release two new albums that year. Relapse, the first, was released on May 19, 2009. Its first single and music video, We Made You, has been released on April 7. On November 19, 2009, he announced on his website that Relapse, a refill, would be released on December 21. The album was a re-release of Relapse with seven bonus tracks, including Forever and Taking My Ball. Recorded from 2009 to 2010, Recovery was released on June 18, 2010. That's my birthday. In the US, Recovery sold 741,000 copies during its first week, topping the Billboard 200 chart. Recovery remained atop the Billboard 200 chart for five consecutive weeks of a seven-week total. Billboard reported that it was the best-selling album of 2010, making Eminem the first artist in Nielsen SoundScan history with a two-year-old best-selling album. Recovery is the best-selling digital album in history. Its first single, Not Afraid, was released on April 29, 2010, and debuted atop the Billboard Hot 100. Its music video was released on June 4. Not Afraid was followed by Love The Way You Lie, which debuted at number 2 before rising to the top. Although Love The Way You Lie was the best-selling 2010 single in the United Kingdom. With recovery, Eminem broke the record for the most successive US number 1 albums by a solo artist. He appeared at the 2010 Bet Awards, performing Not Afraid and The Airplanes Part 2, with B.O.B. and Keisha Cole. In June, Eminem and Jay-Z announced they would perform together in Detroit and New York City at concerts called the Home and Home Tour. He opened the 2010 MTV Video Music Awards on September 12, performing Not Afraid and Love the Way You Lie with Rihanna singing the choruses. He and Rihanna again collaborated on Love the Way You Lie, Part 2, the sweet sequel of their hit single. Unlike the original, Rihanna is the head vocalist and it is sung from the female perspective. In December 2010, Great Eminem Recovery was number one on Billboard's Top 25 Music Moments of 2010. He appeared at the 2011 Grammy Awards on February 13, performing Love the Way You Lie Part 2 with Rihanna and Adam Levine, and I Need a Doctor with Dr. Dre and Skylar Grey. In March 2011, within the Eminem show and the Marshall Mathers LP were certified diamond by the RIA, Eminem is the only rapper with the two diamond certified albums. With more than 60 million likes, he was the most followed person on Facebook, outscoring Lady Gaga, Justin Bieber, Rihanna and Michael Jackson. 
Eminem announced on May 24, 2012 that he was working on his next album scheduled for the release the following year. During the 2013 MTV Video Music Awards, it was announced that the album would be entitled The Marshall Mothers LP 2, following The Marshall Mothers LP and was scheduled for release on November 5th. Its lead single, Berserk, was released on August 25, 2012 and debuted at number 3 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. The album was released on November 5, 2012 by Aftermath Entertainment, Shady Records and Interscope Records. The Marshall Mathers LP 2 was Eminem's seventh album to debut atop the Billboard 200 and had the year's second largest fires to week sales. He was the first artist since the Beatles to have four singles in the top 20 of the Billboard Hot 100. The first American artist to win seven week consecutive UK number one albums. Eminem is tied with the Beatles for second place for most consecutive chart topping UK albums. On November 3, 2013, Eminem was named the first YouTube Music uh, Awards Artist of the Year and a week later he received the Global Icon Award at the 2013 MTV Europe Music Awards. In the summer of 2014, Eminem at Rosenberg began using the hashtag ShadyXV on all social networking sites and Eminem wore a t-shirt with the hashtag on stage. This was later revealed to be the name of an upcoming Shady Records compilation. Shady 15, released on November 24, 2014, during Black Friday week, consists of one of the greatest hits discs and one disc of new material by Shady Records artists such as D12, Slaughterhouse, Bad Meets Evil, and Yellow Wolf. The album debuted at number 3 on the Billboard 200 chart. The official Eminem box set, a career-spanning 10-disc vinyl box set, was released on March 12, 2015. The set includes seven of Eminem's eight studio albums, the 8 Mile soundtrack, the compilation Eminem Presents, the re-up and the greatest hits collection, curtain call the hits. Eminem is the, the executive producer of the soundtrack on the sports drama Southpaw with Shady Records. The first single from the soundtrack called Phenomenal was released on June 2, 2015. Another single, Kings Never Die by Eminem featuring Gwen Stefani was released on July 10, 2015 on YouTube via Eminem's Vivo account. Eminem participated in the 2017 Bet Hip Hop Awards annual cipher using his verse of freestyle rap called The Storm to further criticize Trump and the administration for, among other things, Trump's focus on the National Football League players, her test during the Star Spangled Banner over Hurricane Maria, recovery efforts, and lack of gun control reformed in the wake of 2017 Las Vegas shooting. Eminem ended the cipher by giving an ultimatum saying that Trump's supporters cannot be his fans. In October 2017, Eminem appeared on Revenge, a track from Pink's album Beautiful Trauma. It was reported that the Secret Service interviewed Eminem in 2018 from 2019 regarding threatening lyrics towards President Trump and daughter Ivanka. Later in November 2017, the first single Walk on Water was released which featured Beyonce. On November 28, 2017, Dr. J posted a video confirming the album's release date as December 15, 2017. Despite an online leak of his album two days prior, Revival was released as planning on December 15. On January 5, 2018, the second single, River, was released, which featured Ed Sheeran. On August 31, 2018, Eminem released his 10th studio album and the first surprise album, Kamikaze, making it his second full-length studio album in 8 months. The album topped the Billboard 200, making it his ninth album in a row to do so after selling 434,000 units in its first week. On January 17, 2020, Eminem released another surprise album, Music To Be Murdered By. Recorded from 2019 to 2020, the album featured guest appearances by Young M.A., Royce the 59, Q-Tip, Dinan Porter, White Gold, Ed Sheeran, Juice World, Skylar Grey, and many others. The album debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, selling 279,000 album equivalent units in its first week. On March 9, 2020, the music video for Song Godzilla was released on YouTube through Lyrical Lemonade's channel. 
The video features Mike Tyson and Dr. J in over 520 million views. A deluxe edition of the album titled Music To Be Murdered By Side B was released on December 18, 2010. On February 13, 2022, Eminem performed at the Super Bowl LVI or 56 halftime show alongside Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Kendrick Lamar, and Mary J. Bleach with a surprise appearance from 50 Cent and Anderson Ha. Eminem announced his second greatest hits album on July 11, 2022, entitled Current Call 2, which is a sequel to his first compilation current called The Hits. The album covers his albums from relapse to music to be murdered by, as well as collaborations and songs from movie soundtracks. It was released on August 5, 2022, and also includes The King and I, from the D D2 and LBC, and an additional new track named Is This Love, featuring 50 Cent. Eminem has cited several MCs as influencing his rapping style, including Esham, Cold G Rap, Master Ace, Big Daddy Kane, Tupac Shakur, Nucleus, Ice-T, Mantronics, Mel Mel, LL Cool J, Beastie Boys, Run DMC, Rakim and Boogie Down Productions. In How to Rap, Guerrilla Black notes that Eminem studied other MCs to hone his rapping technique. Eminem listened to everything and that's what made him one of the greats. Examples of hip-hop subgenres that Eminem's music has been described as include horrorcore, comedy hip-hop, and hardcore hip-hop. Eminem also incorporates rap rock into his music and cited rock acts during the 1970s and 1980s, such as Jimi Hendrix and Led Zeppelin, as influences in his music. Eminem uses alter egos in his songs for different rapping styles and subject matter. His best-known alter ego, Slim Shady, first appeared on the Slim Shady EP and was in the Slim Shady LP, the Marshall Mathers LP, the Eminem Show, and Core Relapse, the Marshall Mathers LP 2, Kamikaze, and Music to be Murdered by. In this persona, his songs are violent and dark with a comic twist. Eminem downplayed Slim Shady on the recovery because he felt it did not fit the album's theme. Another character is Ken Kaneff, a gay man who pokes fun at Eminem's songs. Ken was created and originally played by fellow Detroit rapper Aristotle on the Slim Shady LP, where Kaneff makes a prank call to Eminem. As a white performer prominent in a genre influenced by black artists, Eminem has been compared much to his chagrin to Elvis Presley and has lyrically been compared to Bob Dylan. Rapper Asher Roth has been compared to Eminem and Roth devoted a song on his album, As I E.M. from Eminem, to him, which he took offense to. The accomplished trumpeter Nicholas Payton has called Eminem the Bix Bader Becky of hip-hop. <laughs> it's been a while. I guess I had to go to that place to get to this one. Now some of you might still be in that place, you're trying to get out.